Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Career Compass. I'm Asel Jatunarachi, the president of the Rotaract Club of Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. So this project is a collaborative effort between the Faculty of Medicine Rotaract Club as well as SLMcast. So before we start off, let me briefly introduce the two organizations and briefly introduce what this project is all about. Next slide, please. Right. So this project is a collaborative project between the two organizations, as I mentioned before. And the aim of this session today is to inspire the youth about career development and opportunities in career development. So let me first introduce our club, the Rotaract Club of Faculty. And our main focus is to empower our community with medical knowledge, develop the professional skills and leadership skills of our members, and give opportunities for students for fellowship and fun. And this is a project conducted by the Public Relations Avenue of our Rotaract Club. Moving on to SLFcast. Next slide, please. All right. So SL Webcast is a digital youth media organization which provides a platform for the youth to showcase their talent through creativity, volunteerism, and leadership skills. Uh, and we are very happy to collaborate with them today. So with that, let me introduce the moderator of today's session, who is Nikit Karnaratna. He's a student of our faculty, as well as he's a news anchor at the Sri Lanka Rupani Corporation. So Nikit, over to you to conduct this session. Thank you, Asel. Uh, I hope my audio is uh, is working. Yes. Right. So, uh, if we get right to it. So, Career Compass, the goal of today's discussion is to shed light on the concept of career diversity. I am sure that all of us in this meeting today have interests that are not confined to our primary field. So in order to discuss about the risks and the challenges and even the benefits and the advice that you'd need to embark on a journey to find and live your passion, we have with us a set of esteemed panelists who will shed light on the matter. So to sort of let the audience to get to know our panelists, we'll have a bit of an introduction by the panelists themselves. So without further ado, let's start with Dr. Prabhat. So, Dr. Prabhat, can you tell us a bit about your journey thus far? How was it for you to start out in the field of medicine and then switch over to human resources? Yes. So, I'm uh, delighted to be uh, part of this uh, forum. Of course, uh, I'm someone who would always encourage youth or even adults for that matter. If you are not happy with what you're doing, Move on. You might be in the most lucrative field of a business or whatever. At the end of the day, if you're not happy, you better find something which makes you happy. So I uh, passed out from the University of Kalama, Faculty of Medicine in 98, did my internship, completed it, got my SMC registration. But however, I did not apply for post-intern appointment because I was not in the top part of the list anyway. So I didn't want to move out of Colombo at that time. So I had to make a decision. So before internship, I had got an opportunity to work with uh, as, a, as a demonstrator at one of the newest units called MEDAC. At that time, the Faculty of Medicine was going through this curriculum change and they had formed this unit to oversee that. 
and I got a chance to be part of that. And while working in the in that particular uh, unit, I got a chance to work closely with the psychiatry department because I was coordinating the behavioral stream. And then when I had the chance to work closely with uh, Professor Ravin Hangwell, he said, okay, once you do your internship, you can come to the psychiatry department and uh, be an academic. So I finished the internship, came back, and I was there as a temporary lecturer for almost two years. And there were some cadre positions available in the psychiatry department. And in fact, Professor Ravin had arranged my postgraduate path. Everything was done. But I was still on a temporary basis. I had not been absorbed into the permanent cadre. So I did my part one in psychiatry, got through and got my training location as a goal. But because I was only a temporary lecturer, I could not proceed. So now at that point, I was at a big dilemma. What to do now? I'm here stuck as a temporary lecturer. I can't go for my training. I can't get a permanent position. So many issues. So then at one of the family gatherings, I met one of my uncles who is running this, uh, who founded this, the largest construction company in Sri Lanka. And uh, just after A-levels, before getting into the university, faculty of medicine, there was a gap about two and a half years for us because there was a huge backlog. So during that time, I think we are having a few technical difficulties on Dr. Uh, Prabhat's side. So uh, bear with us for a few minutes while we sort out the matter. So if I could uh, direct your attention to the group chat, you will see a link present there. So that's a link to a poll which we want to use to get your perspective, the audience's uh, perspective on this matter. So if you click the link, you'll be directed to a poll and then uh, we can see what the audience uh, thinks. Niket, I'm so sorry. There was an instantaneous ah, power outage. Right. So my, right. the, the power was switched off. <laughs> I had to come back. Right, Dr. Prabhat. No worries. So sorry. Let's get it. Right. So uh, as I was saying, so before before getting to university, I had the chance to work for my uncle. So then when I met my uncle at this point, I had a chat with him because even before getting to the medical faculty, I had worked for him and I uh, worked in uh, finance, HR, and I got two and a half years of work experience working for a construction company. So then my uncle said, okay, fine. Uh, so if you want to come back, there's always a place for you at this company. So then a uh, lot of discussions with my family, with my parents. So I decided to go ahead with it. So I uh, moved into HR from the first HR department in this construction company. And I've been in HR for the last close to now 20 years. I did my master's in HR. And... Of course, I have, I have not totally given up my medical career. I have done my postgraduate in occupational health. And that really helps me in my HR as well. Because, say, what a doctor to the normal population, the HR manager is two employees. HR manager will have to take care of the employee. So having the medical knowledge and having the understanding about occupational health and safety and all these issues has really helped me. So now I'm well settled in my alternate career as at the moment I am HR director in a multinational and 
parallelly i'm helping organizations with their occupational health and safety and combining the two to the the, the best uh, possible way so that's my career up to now briefly right dr prabhat i think that certainly is a remarkable story because uh, we have a lot of concepts in society where if you start out with one field you have to see it through to the end but uh, your story proves to us that it is never too late uh, to decide so if we and uh, nikita i just want to add one more thing yeah. now this yeah. construction company which i worked for my uncle they are, he also has a beautiful story he's a ex military and now he's heading the uh, biggest construction company and managing so many chartered engineers and guiding them but he has his first degree in geography he has a geography degree and now advising the chartered engineers on engineering over to you <laughs> so as surrounded by people with uh, diverse skills so uh, if you move on to the next panelist mr tarush pereira can you tell us a bit about yourself and how your story has been starting out yeah. by being an id consultant and moving on uh, to having your own startup correct sure correct sure naked so i was uh, i was i did my major in it and business both so uh, i did uh, my first bachelor's for the it and uh, business information systems uh, for the specific and uh, then i started my career as a it consultant uh, in a, one of major apparel companies in sri lanka and uh, i was consulting basically uh, for the manufacturing process planning and the manufacturing process of them so through through a software of course so so that's my start from from my it background and uh, then then covid happened right so this is a covid startup so we started uh, i started my business uh, during the first after the first lockdown of uh, covid and uh, uh, which is a uh, four years back like almost four years uh, it's four years for the me and uh, uh, so i was during the lockdown i really had some time to think about more options and uh, i was looking i was anyway looking for businesses and uh, i was before before starting the uh, my own business so i was uh, doing a couple of small businesses and i was doing some business with my friends for the apparel sector and uh, so after that this covid thing and over the all the lockdown happened then i was thinking one day uh, what should i do next and uh, and then during the lockdown people everyone was at home so uh people were doing many things so uh, they started uh, doing uh, making food and singing and everything we saw those days and uh, so even i was uh, i was going through the internet and uh, looking for opportunities uh, in the country even through even at uh, uh, in a uh, situation like that and then then i realized uh, yeah there is some market in the country for the for this cookies so we are de- uh, specialized in decorated cookies in uh, sri lanka and currently we are uh, delivering island wide and we have done couple of shipments to couple of uh, countries as well uh, so then i yes then i started then i thought yeah it's it's something interesting then it's something i can do uh, but i haven't had any baking experience but i thought yes i should give a try and and see then then i did some research then i did some r and d uh, for during the lockdown period uh, i i did i tried some recipes uh, i drew some arts uh, the cookies and um, i then i realized then okay this is something interesting this is something cool this is something relaxing in other way uh, then i should do something i should start something and see uh, so that's how i started my business then so after the first lockdown after the government decided to uh, lift the lockdown and open the country then i uh, opened my social media pages and uh, everything i started promoting then uh, i got some traction so since then i'm um, it's been almost 4 years and i'm coming uh, uh, we are we have expanded uh, since then and uh, so that's kind of a that's how uh, I started the journey from IT to 
current uh, confectionery, the cookies and everything. Uh, so if I say about like how I switch, uh, it's like when you when you when you are in, into a business or when you are some doing something really passionate about something you are really interested in, you you get uh, some sort of like a, let's say for a business you always talk with your business right and sometimes your business talks to you uh, sometimes in the beginning you are the you, you are the everyone you are the you are the you are the sales guy you're the finance guy you are your own manager so everything so every day you have your discussions with your business then then be your business sales uh, okay this is the right time to do marketing okay this is the right time to do some sales this is the right time to do for a new product launch right so likewise you always have your communication with business then there are points uh, then you reach to a point so i started as a part time so i had my full time business uh, in the beginning uh, for like one and a half years and i started small and i started part time and then i uh, slowly realized with the, the demand uh, which i am getting and uh, uh, the 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 feedback from the people and everything so i decided to move on to full time uh, so that's the current journey so far so we are uh, developing teams and we are kind of expanding right now Right, uh, this is so again, that's a different perspective on the on the field of uh, career compass. Where during the time of adversity, when things were going wrong, you managed to find a way to make things go right. So, uh, yeah. if you move on to our uh, third task, Mr. Abdul. So, Mr. Abdul, could you tell us how you, as a third year medical student, how did you come? about uh, developing your own website as the web trust. What has your journey been thus far? Am I audible, Nikit? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, hi everyone. Good evening. Um, so my story is a bit, um, it's fluctuating, I would say, because all it's, it's all started after my advanced levels. Uh, I did my second child and I was in the, break till I get university entrance. So as Dr. Prabhat said, you know, after after your advanced years, you have a considerable amount of time that is left for you to do something or make a good use of it. So in the meantime, uh, during my A-levels, second child, so that was the time period where I had to decide what can I do or what am I good at to discover. So then then at the beginning, what I just did was to start, you know, to tutoring the students. So we started to do small uh, O-level classes and stuff. Then suddenly the COVID, you know, breakdown, it happened. And then during this, um, most of the mass tuition classes and masters, they, you know, they went off, they just took it off. So all the students who were used to these mass classes and used to travel to all the top cities of the country and they were lost out of nowhere. They are like lost in the middle. So we, so we realized there's something you know, in the, in the market, which is to be either be used as a business or either something. So then few of us, including myself and few of my friends and colleagues, as seniors in the University of Morocco, we started uh, a free online tutoring network island-wide. That was for the badge of 2000, um, 2020 or 19 levels, if I'm not wrong, 2020 levels. So then during that time, we started a telegram network where we were uh, recruiting all volunteer tutors from, for all the subjects, including biostream, mathematics, and all the subjects. And then we had a network of uh, you know, volunteers as well as students who are in need of, you know, uh, guidance for their advanced levels. And then what we did was we created a platform. And so those days we didn't have this popular Zoom technology and we didn't know how to, you know, set up everything. But then we used to just uh, use, our, use our, you know, uh, stuff at home to set up the phone. We didn't have the proper, uh, you know, instruments those days. So then somehow we did it with the help of uh, our volunteers and with the support of our uh, students. And those days, they, the you know, the message was spreading throughout all the schools in Colombo and why not throughout the country. So we had a, a large number of students and then uh, it was going very good. And then uh, apart from that, then after the tuition masters or the big giants in the tuition field, when they stepped into the online field, then we realized, okay, so we were bridging the gap where they were lacking, they were missing 
right in a society so that once they entered then we realized we had a discussion with the volunteers and we told okay now it's time to hand over it back to the tuition masters so we are they are doing an organizing way what we were trying to do is we were trying to find the available volunteers and try to cover certain subjects in papers and revisions etc so after handing the entire thing over then we announced them that we won't be conducting any sessions anymore you all can join the online classes and stuff which is paid and that we were doing for totally free but what was left with us was the data the network that we built so how can we utilize it properly what can it be utilized for then what we realized was during covid 19 as all of you know it in a split second it's very easy for something to catch fire right in the sense like in the, any disinformation any misinformation anything just goes viral because the amount of people online during the covid was you know two or three times more than the regular uh, season right so then we we thought of Uh, creating a platform where we can uh, publish official news. So then I started very small from WordPress.com. I think all of you all know that it's a website building platform where you can drag and drop options. Anyone can learn. So then we just went through YouTube and then just I actually went through YouTube and started basically a small SLM class dot WordPress.com. That was the beginning. So a very basic HTML looking website. Right then later on, uh, later on like when when there was misunderstandings and you know misinformation fake news was spreading a lot about the examination timetable and all this stuff because we had our target audience was advanced level students and the students on the age of 18 and 19 in sri lanka around the country right so we wanted to supply them the original information so we reached out to the ministries the department of examination and got the exact timetable and then we emailed them we tried to message them get the information but we know it's very hard to get prompt information right to keep on the audience fed properly so fortunately i would say it's it's the luck right so fortunately when i was surfing through the department of examinations in sri lanka the website they had uploaded the new examination timetable so fortunately i was one of the person on the website at that time so i was able to download it in all three languages from english sinhala and tamil then what did i then as as we all know the government website goes you know of or it becomes you know lagging then all the people users of, across the country try to Uh, log into it then fortunately my host was from singapore so my host was a bit i won't say better than the government but fortunately the service was a bit better right so i uploaded all the uh, timetables in my website and saying it's out officially because the students and the network with us they blindly trusted us so it is our responsibility to give them the exact information not just to find the peak or you know the trend so when we uploaded this like rapid fire within the day You know, my Google Analytics shows a Burj Khalifa. You know? It just shows me a spike at that. So that was the moment where I just realized, okay, this was the okay, this is the thing that people need. People need accurate information on time, and you know. So then one of my friend, a very good friend of mine from uh, school, he contacted me and told, uh, "Brother, you do have a SLLS dot WordPress dot com. Why don't you make it official? Why don't you try to go?" So I, I was not having in the mind of making it an organization or proper scale because I, it was just another platform for me to you know distribute my materials and articles. So I thought of that and invested an amount and got into dot com so that it will be more reliable and then start getting calls from around the country saying it's true from where you get it and all this stuff so that our entire audience and our circle our community started to grow. So we from that perspective we grew within. small time span we were able to be titled as the sri lanka's youngest most viewed website because uh, i think uh, in i mean we'll be sharing few slides to show that you know we are across 90 plus countries and 500 plus cities our website has been reached so all the details from the google analytics have been uh, you know given to us i, I, I think it's screen shared so this is roughly just showing the uh, analytics of how the in, uh, website has been spread so this is this was the catalyst to us to do more Right, so you are doing something out of your comfort zone, like you know, you are a student of uh, science, and then you know what people think is you need to be in books, is you need know, to keep on studying. But you know, but something like everyone has this, you know, second option, this something that sparks. Maybe either sports, or maybe stamp collection, maybe it's small, or maybe currency collection, or maybe drawing or anything. So, but people think, okay, to earn a living or to do a little thing, you need a, uh, you know, main career. So that's what. Uh, I was having in the, my interest was about journalism and about you know providing the information properly. So that's how I stepped into this, and uh, I was able to drag it along for all these years with the support of my team. So we are just four years old for this year will be hopefully, and then my story continues 
as a medical student as well as the retention of SLR class. Right, Mr. So again, that's uh, another story that has a lot to it. Uh, it's, you know, one would think perhaps maybe making such a decision is easy to start your own website or something like that. But stories go to show that yes, dedication, effort, and hard work is required. But the at the end of the day, the takeaway message message is that it's possible. So if we now move on and start to talk about things a bit more in detail. So we'll go back to Dr. Prabhat. So uh, Dr. Prabhat, earlier when we were discussing about your journey, you told us how at certain points you had to make decisions. And I'm sure that making these decisions weren't easy and you had to weigh the pros and the cons of uh, what each of the fields offered. So even now as students, most of our audience might have questions about Okay, I'm interested in a particular field or a certain different passion that I'd like to follow, but I'm currently engaged in doing a certain degree. And therefore, should I do it now? Should I spend a couple of years doing this and then maybe switch on to something else? What sort of advice would you give us in terms of deciding on when to switch? When would be the right time to make this change? Yes. So basically, uh, when, when I was listening to the other two as well, uh, for the three of us, I think circumstance has paid, played a big role in, in, the, in the changes uh, we have made. In my case, okay, I, had, I couldn't leave Colombo and go to Golan. If I went there, I would have got a salary. So there was circumstance. And for the other two, like COVID had a big role to play. So looking at that, Yes, of course, you can't deny the fact that many of our choices would be governed by the circumstance. It might be your, your current situation, family situation, or some other thing. But if you go a step beyond that, when someone is deciding on what would you like to end up with, finally, it has to align with who you are, basically. Like Robin Sharma beautifully says, you won't be happy if what you do is not aligned with who you are. So this is what you do, who you are. This is what you do. So unless the two are well aligned, you can make a living. You can make money. No question about it. But you won't be happy. At the end of the day, that is what all of us wants, right? To be happy. So in order to achieve that, what I have been using, because I do a lot of sessions on this particular area for schools, universities, I use this concept called Ikigai. I think most of you would have heard about it from Japan. According to the concept of Ikigai, if you want to be happy, if you want to be fulfilled in life, what you do needs to meet four criteria. If what you are going to choose to do in life if that is in the intersection of all these four criteria, then definitely you will be happy. So what are these four things? First, things? first thing is, what you're going to do should be something that you know. That is something that you are competent enough in doing. Of course, there are now enough resources. You can learn about anything. However, and sometimes we learn while doing, accepted. But at the end of the day, the first criteria is doing something that you know how to do. That is first one. The second criteria is you should be doing something that you love. Just because it gives you an inflow of money just because it gives you prestige just because it gives you a nice office no because you really love it then only you will have that passion inside of you to do the best that you are going to do on that particular chosen subject something that you love number three is you should be doing something that there is a demand for in the world 
There's a need for that. There are people who are looking for it. It can be a product, it can be a service, whatever you are going to offer, there's a need for it. Third, fourth is you should get well paid for what you're going to choose. Now, if you look at this, so this covers all the bases, isn't it? So to do something, you should be competent. You should know how to do it. You should love doing it, that passion. And there should be a need for it. Just because you love doing something and you are good at it also, if there's absolutely no need for it in the world, you are not going to be successful. You won't be fulfilled. There will always be a vacuum because you are doing something, you are you're passionate, you know how to do it, everything's there. You can make a, a, a some earn something also, but there's no real need for it. So you might feel all what you are doing is for nothing. Then the last one is you can have other three. Okay, you are doing something which you love, which you are capable of, and the world also needs it. But if there's no economic value for it, if people are not willing to pay for it, what will happen to you? Again, there'll be a big vacuum. You will be empty. Right? Therefore, whenever you are trying to settle into something, make sure to put that through this test. Four things. You know about it, you love it, the world needs it, and there's uh, the people are willing to pay for it. When that, when you find that particular thing you want to do in the intersection of all these four, that is what you uh, should end up doing. And there's another concept. At the moment, I'm holding the franchise for a beautiful career assessment tool called My Disha. It's an Indian product. I have the franchise here. In that, we look at similar things, but not exactly the same things. We look at your you are interest, what you like doing. Then we look at your aptitude, your skills. There are seven basic skills we look at. Then we look at your personality. There are seven areas we look at. Then we match these three and give you a choice based on your interest, your skills, aptitude, and personality. This is what you should be doing in your life. I have done this for my two elder kids. It's working wonderfully. So. The, the message I want to share is just because your parents tell you to do something, just because your teachers tell you to do something, just because you see someone, now say, uh, even my youngest, who's now 13, see all these influencers, so-called influencers, making millions, like making YouTube videos. He's so fascinated. Just because you like it, it's not where you should end up. There are so many other things, as I said, you should have the skill, there should be a need, you should be paid for it, you should have the personality for it, you should have the skills for it, all those things matter. So it's a it's a difficult decision, what, we, what I call it the second most difficult decision in your life that you're going to ever make, career choice. Because the first one, obviously, finding your life partner. And the second most difficult choice is finding your career. So consider all aspects, make a informed decision before you settle into something. About you. Okay, Dr. Shreva. I think that's actually quite a fascinating concept, this uh, concept of Ikigai, because it uh, shows you that just because you like it doesn't mean that you should blindly go for it. You should consider the other factors as well. And I think that's great advice for all of us listening in when we decide on our careers, because we are around that time of our lives when we have to make an informed decision, as you said, about our careers. So, if we talk to uh, Mr. Tarun Shapirela, so uh, while you were introducing yourself, you mentioned how you haven't always been a baker, right? You were working in the field of IT. So, I'd like to build up on that concept a little bit for our audience. So, because you weren't always working in this particular field that you were now, how was it for you to develop the skills that you needed to start this company? All right. Okay. So skills. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. 
so I mentioned I wasn't a, a baker at the beginning, but uh, I had like a small experience as with helping my mother when I was a kid for making baking, but I haven't done any baking until I start my business, right? So skills wise, yes. So as an IT consultant uh, before starting my, the business, I there are many skills. Uh, there are many skills which help me uh, for the business from my previous career to this career. Uh, but let, let me let me tell you about let's say uh, two two major skills which are uh, today. So one skill that I'm seeing is uh, it's it's actually a soft skill. It's the the communication, right? So communication is something I developed uh, within from from my previous uh, career, uh, which really really helped for the business because communication is a one major thing. Or as well as communication is something underrated in, in, in Sri Lanka and I think maybe in the region as well. So we don't give up even even, even if you see some CVs uh, you get for the companies, we put our soft skills, communication skills in the corner of the CV. We, we think it's not important, but it's the something most important thing uh, when we do any any career, I, I believe. So that's a one major thing I developed. Because uh, as a consultant, what I played was a mostly advisory role uh, for the production and the planning aspects of the co company. Uh, so communication was a must. And uh, and it's also, it's a clear communication and a well prepared. And uh, so it all, it helped in another way to when we communicate with our customers, when we communicate with uh, anyone uh, in, uh, interested in the business, uh, maybe uh, when we work with brands, uh, when we work with uh, uh, corporate uh, event planners. So it was something I developed and which helped me a lot. And then then I would like to talk about another, another uh, uh, skill uh, I transferred was, uh, so, I, I mentioned I was uh, I worked as a uh, I worked in the apparel industry and I worked as a IT consultant in a planning and the production right so planning and the production is is, is the manufacturing process so I had the, that opportunity I had that knowledge I had that advantage to replace uh, the that knowledge my previous knowledge to my current business uh, how to plan and how to plan uh, from the from the point where a customer comes to us and uh, place the order and uh, to plan the production and to procure our raw materials and from the delivery point to the delivery point i had this whole uh, knowledge on how to how to run a factory with the production so that's that's really 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 helped me uh, from my previous career and uh, to when switching to a new one so those two are like a two major two major uh, skills that I help, I develop and which help me uh, when I'm transferring from IT to my starting my own business and uh, to continue with and to, to continue with it. Yeah. Right. I think. So uh, again, that's another different perspective on the matter. The concept of transferable skills, where just because you're doing one, you're working in one field or studying in one field and you decide to switch to a completely different one, it doesn't mean that everything that you've learned there is of no use or whatever. It will be a benefit. So that's what uh, Mr. Tarusha just spoke to us. So our uh, next panelist, Mr. Abdul. So we have, a, again, another third different perspective on the matter because... Mr. Abdul, he hasn't uh, switched careers. He runs it badly. So, what sort? So, how it is? How is it that you manage your time between your life as a medical student as well as running a successful website? Um, yeah, thank you, Nikit, for that wonderful question. So, that is one of the you know most thrown question at me. Whenever wherever I go, like what they ask is how do you manage everything? It's, it's up to us how like when will we start to manage? Right? It's not an easy journey because um, as you say, because there are there are certain perspectives on on how you take 
uh, into you know the effect of certain things into your life for example like you might uh, consider a certain exam you know the seriousness level of that which you give priority like you know the prioritization of in your scale for certain task will will totally depend on how you uh, <clears throat> make how you categorize it like for example if i say that you have an exam and then you have a particular event to attend right so then it's up to you to decide on what priority on what basis that will you be managing both if it's able to manage then how will you do both but then there are certain people have seen that you know if, if it's something on to the academics then they give us priority yes you have to give but then if it's something that you passionate about that you can like if you feel like yes i can do this also but then i have to you know sacrifice a bit of my sleeping time i have to sacrifice a bit of my uh, you know my uh, leisure time so whatever it is so actually like to gain to gain something which is more rewarding or this something satisfying which is in your perspective then you need to give something right so it can be in form of your energy or your time or your you know personal space so time management is not 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 an easy thing that you can um, you know guide someone within few minutes of few seconds to say that you know this is how you have to do because it's tailor made it's customized because all, all of us we have our own uh, you know pace of working the way that how we manage so i'll just say for example in my in my particular case i have a wonderful team with me who is supporting me and who is working with me starting with my family and my friends and my celeb cast team right so we have a wonderful team we are all of them are volunteer right this is a volunteer organization so they know that they are not getting paid but then what they get in return is their experience the networking skills and the soft skills that are not you know that cannot be bought elsewhere because how do how do i like as a single person how can i make sure that my team members get this is by you know i have to constantly keep on updating myself and trying to see the, the way to, to avail all the opportunities which is available for my members and to make sure that they are you know uh, make sure that i value their time so by having a good relationship with your team that you will be able to work with a peace of mind so for example if you have a, if you if you are a particular person who is organized Right, or if you have if you're setting everything in particular, like you know, schedule or an agenda, then you you'll be able to divide the task among your team members and give it. You know, that we have to be doing this and this way because unless and until you do and inspire them, you can't expect them to do the same that as you are doing because you need to be a leader in this generation rather than being a boss. That bossy generation is gone. It's no more. It's the generation for leaders, right? Everyone should be a leader. So what we inspire, like you know, me, if I am being a leader from like. If I'm managing MBBS with my extracurricular, then I'm setting example for my team is that if you wish that you can do this, you can do this. It's not that I'm, it's not that you can excel in both. I can do everything very well in both. There will be some ups and downs, but at the end of the day, like when you look back into your journey, it's the experience that matters, right? Which will really make it worth it. So support from the team that you're working with is really important. And then the use of digital tools. Oh my God! The number of digital tools available now. I can't just say like even we have Tarusha here with me. I think he will agree with me saying that the amount of digital tools is available to make your life easy. Starting with Google Calendar, right? The simple calendar tool that we have, we can arrange everything and we can assign tasks for teammates, assign meetings, schedules, everything. So when you just look into you know your schedule, you can have everything planned. So you know you won't miss a single thing. Your lectures or your studies or meetings or anything, right? So starting from Google Meet or to Whatever the uh, meeting um, tools that you have, or to your you know scheduling and to do task list, and it will motivate you. But even even studying should be set as a task so that you can tick it and then complete it, and then use the you know set of uh, methods that you can focus on. So while you're studying, then you can take a small break and then go back to to do something you know uh, in your work, like using a Pomodoro technique, like your forty minutes you're studying, and then you go back to do something that you are working on, then come back to study. So it will give you that. Uh, the particular break that you need to be consistent in both the field right and then also i would like to say something which i don't hear most of the people used to give importance about is being ethical in what you do i think it's very important that we be ethical in what we do right like ethics is something that you know no one will come and point at you or no one will come and just measure you on but it's something which will reward you with i mean which, which will reward yourself right? if you are ethical if you are working with work ethics with your workmates and if you are being ethical with your like in future if you are like being a medical student with my patients or in future when i'm interacting with them if i'm ethical enough with them so whoever if you are working if you are able to maintain that ethics properly i think that you can go a very long journey right and then 
Uh, and the last thing I want to say when I had a discussion with one of my friends, it's very important to understand about self-learning. Right? Because the importance of self-learning is, is actually a competition right now. Like if you go to LinkedIn and if you open the LinkedIn, you know, the dashboard or the platform, you can see people are, you know, celebrating and, you know, they're happy that they have completed this, they're doing that and they're doing this. So it's more about completing stuff and making yourself, I mean, filled with extracurriculars and stuff that which will make your CV or the portfolio more diversified and more rich in, you know, resources. So the, the part of self-learning is not that you need to, learn something totally different it's even maybe maybe making a powerpoint presentation right so we we have we have seen how the powerpoint presentation tool have been you know uh, what do you call evaluating from from back since 2007 i think maybe we had the basic tool and then comes animation now we have this kind of morph effects where you know each and every slide is connected so each and every new update is something to learn that we need to learn and be in touch because as like in my field we are in the you know the journalism and the tech fields so we call it as digital journalism so we we always need to be updated with the tech as well as with the uh, you know the media field so what we believe is if you are continuously learning and if you are you know having proper work ethics with your teammates and if you are able to uh, utilize your time using effective tools then you are able to manage not only just your medical life or your, your, your academics as well as your uh, you know, extra curriculars, but you can do multiple stuff. Even you can do sports and you can do a business. You can be an entrepreneur, right? You can do both. Like it's, it's about, it's about how, how much that we give importance to it and how to make it. And mind me, I'm saying this, your family will miss you. Your loved ones will miss you. They won't be having time from you. They, they won't be, you know, be given much time that you used to give them before because you're busy managing much stuff. But then it's about, you know, the support and the, uh, you know, and then the relationship that you build that with your family as well as your friends, that this is what I'm doing. And then I've been managing this, I need your support. And then the amount of relationship that you are trying to build. So that will help make things, you know, uh, go to next level. So what I see from all these members here, and then what I've heard from experts before is that we need to build this proper structure, the framework of what we are going through in future. Then once making the structure is the hardest part, like, but once it's in place, just need to boost it. That's it, Nikit. Right, Mr. Apo. So uh, before we move on, I'd like to uh, direct everybody's attention to the chat where we've sent the second link for a poll. And after we uh, speak a bit more, we'll come back to the poll and we'll see how the results are. So uh, if I have to say anything about what we just heard from Mr. Abdul. I think he mentioned a lot of important facts that are very relevant and simple facts that we can apply. They're not abstract thoughts. They're things that we can practice in our day-to-day lives that can help us to pursue our dreams. So I just want to sort of summarize for the benefit of the audience as well as a take-home message. So the, the first thing he said was about teamwork, how it wasn't just him who was working on all these projects, but his rapport with his team that helps him to manage the uh, behemoth amount of work that you get as a medical student, as well as managing the website. Secondly, he also spoke about time management, using digital tools like Google Calendar, how you can categorize your day and allocate certain times to whatever you have to do. And then he also talked about ethics and being true to yourself, which is also a very important thing. For simply to be able to sleep well at night. And there's also another thing that I haven't heard much before, but I do think is a very important point, the concept of continuing education, how you can always learn more, and how in this day of digital learning, it's just at the tip of your hand. You just can Google uh, whatever you want. So if we move on and we come back to Dr. Prabhat, I'd like to pick up on something that uh, not only Dr. Prabhat, but also Mr. Harusha mentioned, have the concept again of transferable skills. So, uh, Dr. Prabhat, earlier when you introduced yourself, you told us uh, this uh, very nice analogy of how uh, a doctor and an HR uh, have what they have in common. Could you elaborate a bit more on the similarities between this and the transferable skills and your perspective on the matter and your, the sort of advice you could give 
uh, to people who are worried, okay, I've spent five years doing this, maybe I should spend the rest of my life doing this. Could you tell like, sure. some of that? Sure, we'll do. Now, um, first let me uh, give you a, like an idea about how we see skills. In any study course, you, you get two types of skills. Of course, you get the knowledge, and then you get two types of skills. One type is what we call the technical or non-transferable skills. That is, now as medical students, we learn how to uh, perform a, a, a surgery or whatever. Now, that is a technical skill. Say, when I'm in HR, I can't use that skill. Technical or non-transferable skills. On the other hand, we also learn what we call the transferable or soft skills. Your communication, your leadership, teamwork, negotiation. So all those are transferable. So whether I am in a ICU setup or whether I am facilitating a meeting of the union leaders in a, in a project, those skills are applicable everywhere I go. So that is the advantage which I had because during my five and a half years of uh, uh, med school, I, I, uh, I had never repeated an exam, but I was not in the top of the class as well. But then I spent a lot of time in sports, in associations, club societies, various things. So I was fortunate enough while acquiring the technical skills to be a doctor, I was lucky enough to focus on acquiring the soft skills part of it as well. So when I switched over to HR, so all those soft skills which I learned within the hospital, I could directly apply to this new setting. So that's why I said now, Say, for the general public, a doctor would be giving the technical know-how, prescriptions to cure some illnesses, and also some advice, guidance, leadership for this the bigger problem of non-communicable diseases. So similarly, in a HR setting, yes, there are technical stuff. You should know how to calculate the overtime, what, what, calculate the leave, and all these things, fine. <laughs> but then there's a bigger picture or bigger place for the soft skills, the transferable skills. The Just like the community, the people within an organization also needs advice how to, how to live a healthy life, how to perform better, how to uh, be productive. So they need advice. And a lot of the time they come across so much of health issues can be stress, it can be ergonomics, it can be chemical hazards, various stuff. So with the with the, uh, the soft skills which I learned from the med school, I was able to carry those soft skills along with some of the technical stuff which I learned in medicine to cater the employees of an organization to be healthier, to be happier, to be more productive and be better employees for themselves and for the organization. That's how I was able to link the two, the, the medical career and being in HR. <clears throat> right, uh, Dr. Prabhat. Again, I think that was a, a wonderful way to break down the skill set that we develop in whatever profession and how there are common sets, uh, skill sets that uh, you can build up whatever you do and how it's important to work on things that you tend to forget like communication, how to work with people and all that. So before we move on, uh, uh, let's take a look at the results of the second poll. So if you can uh, have the results on screen. So, uh, as you can see, the question was, what are you currently doing? So this was just for the audience to get to know each other as well, to see what uh, sort of a demographic is present in our webinar today. So, 41% uh, 
is uh, medicine, 35% science, and 24% engineering. So I think what we can see from this variety of subjects is that everyone is a full-time student and uh, they're working on a lot of things. So in terms of this, again, everything that we're talking about today is very relevant because we might, we all have different hobbies, be it playing the piano or maybe dancing or whatever. And sometimes if, as uh, what Dr. Trabala said, if it fits into the concept of Ikigai and you decide to pursue it, this advice would come in handy. So if we move uh, on to Mr. Taro Shabedera. So you said earlier that you started out during the COVID time, you were doing your research and the preliminary work. So I'm sure that while you were making the switch from the field of IT to the field of baking, there must have been a lot of risks that you would have uh, had to face, challenges as well. So could you tell us a bit about the risks and challenges that you encountered and how you managed to successfully uh, get, get past them and what you learned from them in the process? All right. Uh... Yeah, so there are so many. So anyway, uh, if you are switching from one career to another career, it's definitely a risk. Uh, but how to manage the risk is the most important thing. Uh, there are many risks left. So if you are if you are a student, if you are full time student, or if you are doing a uh, employee, or if you are switching to some other field, uh, one major I think we have to uh, admit the one major risk we have if you are coming to a business is the, the, the current uh, economic uh, situation of the country. So that's, we cannot avoid, uh, we cannot uh, 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 control that, right? So knowing that, so the, my, my opinion is, okay, we should, we should know what is going on in the country, what is the political uh, situation in the country, what is the, so during the, during the period of COVID, so, uh, so we never we didn't know what would happen next. So we didn't have any clear future. But uh, we, I, I mean, we 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 thought uh, I thought uh, so it's it's gonna kind of come to end some soon and it's gonna recover. So uh, so even the days I started, the country is a bit better. But so one thing I think everyone should consider is uh, the current economic uh, status, and uh, so it's a risk. Uh, it's a, it's it's like a, there are a couple of uh, let's say some uh, that's something we cannot control from by, by inner side from inner circle of our business right so there are some uh, situations uh, some areas like that we cannot control but we have to be aware before stepping in uh, what are the risks and uh, how to how to how to uh, manage that as well so how to how to take that risk uh, uh, properly without uh, without uh, uh, damaging uh, what you are doing, right? So that's the one risk. And uh, another thing is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, okay, one, one, another one major thing uh, for, for businesses in the country, especially small business, if you're starting small, if you're starting new, one major issue why businesses fail is, is the capital. Right. So not having a proper capital is a risk if you don't have a proper capital. But uh, if you have a, like a, some sort of a capital, if you can uh, risk. Uh, so when I was starting, I said uh, before I started as a part time uh, thing, part time business, like a side hustle. So uh, what I did was I I, I was getting paid around, uh, let's say, uh, 60,000 per month. So in, back in 2018, 2019. Uh, it was like a bit a uh, good salary uh, those days uh, for a fresh graduate and uh, then but then I took a portion of my salary let's uh, around uh, 15,000 rupees then I invested that for the business that's how I started it so you should know how much how 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 your capacity you should have any you should have the knowledge of what 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 amount of uh, uh, money you can risk for that and uh, do it so I always say, uh, so that's how, that's why I, I, I didn't want to risk more. Uh, I wanted to uh, try a bit, uh, try the market. So I did a couple of uh, uh, small uh, few badges and uh, uh, sent out to the market and get the feedback. So 
I started small. So so how I avoid that risk is by starting small and uh, expanding gradually, right? So that's kind of a, that, then again, another thing, what I see, uh, which, uh, which I also faced uh, in the beginning of the business is capital, even though I had like a small amount of capital, I even that I invested, how to, how to manage it, right? So that's something major risk uh, I also had because uh, someone who's not coming from uh, like a proper business background, uh, from not from a business family background, so uh, from the different, completely different uh, career, uh, managing the capital and uh, not knowing how to manage the capital at the beginning was some some risk I had. So, but the thing is though, I I I I I have I had a couple of friends, and uh, I have I had uh, uh, contacts uh, with the uh, with who with friends who have businesses. Then I I reach to them. Then I I talk to them on how to do this, how to do this, and then then luckily I had a couple of friends helping me out on how to manage uh, from the beginning uh, from the earlier days of the business. So that's how like. I think that's your network. So building a network is another important thing and how to manage your risk. I mean, you can uh, uh, reduce any risk if you know, if you have a proper network of friends, uh, you can always reach out, then you can control that. So I think those are a couple of risks I had in the beginning. And uh, I successfully, uh, I think I successfully managed to uh, go through and uh, how, and utilize those risks and uh, to my advantages and my opportunities and my strength. So that's those are the risks and I, that's how I manage it. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Tavosha. So again, the, we got an insight into the, the story or rather the journey of how you start as your own company. Because when we think about making a career shift and or we're starting something new, and when we see these stories, let's say on Instagram or Facebook, we see the finished product, but we don't usually get to see the, the wheels turning behind for months and months, sleepless nights, the risks and challenges faced. So that, that, this is a great opportunity because for everyone, we get to see how Mr. Tarusha had to take risks, calculated risks, informed guesses, and how he successfully navigated uh, the path into making a successful company. So another thing that I'd like to highlight with uh, our next panelist, Mr. Abdul. So uh, when, even when we were speaking to Mr. Tarusha, we got to know how it was a COVID startup during the period of lockdown, where we became increasingly more accustomed to the concept of remote working and this sort of digital screen life which is how most of us got to know Zoom as well. Personally, I hadn't heard of Zoom uh, before COVID. And social media can be used for a lot of things. It can be used for good things. It can be used for bad things. And sadly, unfortunately, in the current day, we get to hear a lot of instances where social media is misused. But we have with us Mr. Abdul, who I believe successfully used social media for its good. Right. So I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Apple to tell us a bit about his experiences with social media and how he properly harnessed the power of social media because it has an undeniable power. Most of the people nowadays are on social media. So how did you manage to capture the power of social media for your journey? Um, okay, uh, thank you for leading towards that direction. And to talk about social media actually um like i can i can talk about like two aspects like you know, uh, let me focus on uh, my personal journey first in a in few words and then i'll come back to uh, sl webcast how it started so as a uh, young student as a youth when i look into social media it was just another platform where i, where I see where i can post and get likes and comments and you know chit chat and stuff but then the power that each and every social media tool and what it contains is it's really significant. And how did I realize it was really a small story? Like I will, I will briefly explain it. <clears throat> so I think uh, back in 2019, uh, uh, oh, I think, then there was a, uh, 19, I think 20, then at the beginning of uh, 
lockdowns. Uh, so then at that time, uh, there was a case where four policemen used to beat up a, a autism child, an autism kid who was for 14 years old. He was big made, he was big looking, but then uh, he was, you know, he was diagnosed with autism. Then he was in a rural area in Sri Lanka. They are, uh, unfortunately, uh, when in a split second where his father was doing some other work, only him, himself, himself and then his father was living at the house. So he just took his father's bicycle and he was riding in the street. Then when he saw police, uh, then he just got, uh, you know, excited. And because he, even though he's 14 years old due to autism, like, you know, his mentality is not that much and it's not, it's not grown as to the age, right? So then he just, when he just stood and he was so excited about it and he, he was uh, frightened. Then the police were suspecting him of being, you know, maybe he's a drug dealer or maybe dealing something. Then without properly investigating, what they did was they just threatened the boys, asking what they're doing, what is this and that and stuff. Then they were like, uh, the boy was stunned and he, he was not able to speak anything. Then what they did was the police used to tie him to a tree and they used to beat him. Four policemen used to beat him. So that was recorded in a uh, CCTV in the nearby shop. And so that footage was released to a uh, media network in Sri Lanka. I don't want to mention the name, which is a uh, uprising network, but it was not, not, not having much of a reach. And it was in Tamil. So, so the lack of, like, you know, the, the reach for that channel didn't make that news, you know, make it worth uh, for highlight. Then what happened was then when, when I was going through social media, I just saw that same TV channel had just put that, uh, you know, that brief video. Then I just saw, I was so shocked to see, and you know, why is the child being beat up like that? What is the reason? Then I just downloaded that video and I just uploaded my Twitter because I made Twitter very early back then, but I was not using it much because I didn't know how to use it back then. But then late, later, like, you know, due to COVID, I was active and then because everything was online, then I just used to just see how they train, how they use the hashtags and trends and stuff, how it works and the algorithm. Then I used to post this video with the hashtag saying, you know, that his name was Tariq. I saw the name. So I just mentioned a hashtag name justice for Tariq. And then I just put, like, put the scenario and then the video. I just tagged a few Sri Lanka leading journalists and even the, um, you know, the UNICEF and some multilateral, I mean, intergovernmental organizations, which was on child safety and education. So then later this thing became so uh, viral and then trending where I got multiple calls to confirm this and affirm this. I, I was unable to manage. I don't know. I, my parents were worried about they were saying like, what have you done? And maybe it will cause a problem to me. And later on, and when I fast forward it, it ended up where Tariq and his father, they got, uh, they got their own house on their own land. But previously they were living in rent and that child got uh, medical treatment facilities for free and then got sponsors for his, uh, future treatments and then the four policemen who used to beat him was suspended and then pro proper legal measures are taken so that then i thought like a simple message a simple tweet from me like my own experience i just saw something a person's life can change you know something totally different can happen so that experience that was really shocking and then i have seen some certain things like that in the movies how they use social media to get the uh you know the gathering of a particular crowd but i i didn't realize that it is actually true and until I was experiencing it. So then when I knew the importance of uh, having a proper network around it. So if because I was tagging those experience, uh, you know, leading journalists in Sri Lanka and those organizations, if they were not notified about this, if they did not know this, then I won't be able to get this message across. Then I understood the importance of networking, the power of having a proper network around you so that whatever the message that you, you have, you will be able to get it out very quickly. So then that was the beginning of the you know, journey of my, my journey in social media. Then I started to have a foot on all the social media platforms which is available and then, you know, try to get across certain messages in a different perspective than our, our own stance, right? Because we, we have to understand that being in social media, there'll always be people who will criticize you. We should be able to accept the criticism because th there, won't be, there won't be a situation where you can please everyone. Because you should know that as uh, when we are posting a content into social media, then that gives them some a license kind of thing for their way people can put out their opinion. So we should be able to accept both, yes or no. So we, we got, I got multiple, uh, you know, uh, hate messages, I got threats from people, and then I got saying that, okay, maybe he's from an NGO, he's trying to do, get some funding about from this and stuff. So people used to claim different things, but unless and until they are able to prove it, it, it will just, you know, be a, just a myth. Right? So what I believe was, if you are passionate about something, and if you believe the tools which you are 
which is available in the thing of fingertips and if you are able to utilize it properly and by optimizing it you know according to the algorithm of each platform then you can get your message across to the world right so that was the power like i want to say in my personal experience of social media so with that experience i started uh, you know when i was starting this as a webcast and then into a <laughs> website which is now an organization which is turning into an organization so i implemented that uh the knowledge which i had in algorithm and social media to get things done because even though in our instagram page i will simply say that <clears throat> we only have around 500 followers but our monthly <clears throat> engagement is like almost 5000 plus engagement that means people are reaching your account more than 5000 people are reaching the website i mean our instagram page but you know the follow is less but now we are realize uh in social media it's the engagement which is important not the amount of followers because we know that there are many websites and platforms you can get fake number of followers and then get your verified even now you can get paid for it so what is important is the amount of engagement that you are having with your audience the trust that you build with them so if you have it properly then you can get your me- message across so during covid it was so sad and very it was a very dark era for many of the people and because for some it sparked opportunity for innovation and creativity so when you are able to use the spark in a proper way you will be able to benefit a, you know your community as well and then lastly i would like to say like whatever the business or the field that you are in like as mr prabhat said there should be a need for it that you need to identify the particular market gap in it right so nowadays we see youth are more into you know they are putting their political view out open or we saw certain bills in sri lanka parliament came out about online safety bill and stuff so it's still controversial things are going on but still when you know your limits and if you are playing safe using the tools that you have as a you know as youth then you will be able to make an impact in the society which is really you know will not only benefit you but the entire community right stop to i think that personally at least that's a very awe inspiring story and i think i speak for everyone uh, when i say this because we hear as i said earlier we hear a lot of bad things that have happened by social media uh, for example recently when i was uh, scrolling through reddit i came across this story where uh, this one child uh, he was a teenager he actually killed himself because uh, someone blackmailed him and threatened to leak some images of him so that, that these are disturbing things that we hear that happen very too frequently actually but mr abdul story it actually sheds light on how this can be used for good because in an age where people exploit other people for views for content for money mr abdul showed us how you can completely turn things around and use this reach to help someone who actually needs it and again that is it that's a wonderful thing to keep in mind when going about in a world where us where all of us where we will be doing our careers in close contact with social media so these are things that we should all bear in mind so uh before we come back to a final round of questioning i'd like to remind the audience to take a look at the chat where we will have a third poll ready for you to get a bit more insight into our audience so with that being said i'll uh, like to ask that another question from dr prabhat so if we continue on this uh, line of questioning about social media and all that everything is at the tips of our fingers advice is freely available nowadays compared to when it was 30 years ago and different people say different things that if you go and google on how to do something there's going to be a lot of answers and not all of them are credible so that is another thing another benefit of our webinar today because we have with us individuals who are experienced and have results of their heart So I'd like to ask Dr. Prabhat could you tell us some advice from your own experiences that would that we should keep in mind when we pursue other careers Yes so as you said there are plenty of advice to go around so let me pick three of those things just to uh, shed light on what areas you should focus on when you are thinking about your career number 1 is the timing now for example some in the west this is common say after college you spend a couple of years 
backpacking, going around, exploring the world before you settle down into a career at all. And you might have another person, okay, by started a career by 20 and by 25, he's a GM and by 30, he's a CEO. And another person might change to a different career when he's 40, 50. And I think Carl Saunders, if I'm not mistaken, was in, in his 70s or 60s when he founded uh, KFC. <clears throat> so something like that. And my uncle, whom I was referring to at the very beginning, he was 52 when he founded his construction company. So the timing is now, there's another uh, saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time is now. So if by any chance, if you are having any doubts into what you have chosen, what you have settled down, so like Steve Jobs says, keep looking. Don't settle. Now, that doesn't mean that you are going to drop everything that you are doing right now and do something different. Or maybe after graduating, you wait for years and years till you find that perfect thing. Now, the message I want to convey to you on this is it's never too late to make that decision. And it's never too early as well. Right? Now, here in Sri Lanka, at what point do we start career guidance? In most cases, after levels. By that time, you have gone through a particular path for four or five years without even knowing. So in my experience, from the reading which I have done, Ideally, by 14, 15, you are, a child is mature enough to make a choice, to decide, to plan. So when you are in grade 9, grade 10, that is where you should start. Then gradually you can, while you are moving, you can make the course corrections. So you don't have to stick to one path. You, what you start, select at 14 should not be your career path when you are 55. So you can make choices. So the first message is, yes. If you are not happy, if what you do is not aligned with who you are, be ready to take, uh, take a chance. And as uh, one of the other speakers said, take a risk. Because at uh, your deathbed, it is the risks that you did not take that would worry you, not the risks that you took. Therefore, be willing to take a risk. And the, the most important thing is, now, I have, I have taken big risks in my life a couple of times, but on both occasions, I ended up doing better than I was doing earlier. The only reason is I have been adding value to myself from a very young age. As again Steve Jobs says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. So add value to yourself. Add additional skills, knowledge, capabilities. So the advice is be willing to take a risk it's never too late, never too early, but willing to take a risk. But for you to be able to make a risk, add value to yourself. And on this, I would like to give a personal experience, not personal, my son's experience. My eldest son, who is now 23, just about eight months ago, passed out with a degree on business communications. And now he's working two full-time jobs, one US time, one uh, Middle East time. And he's making good money. And the, the point that the, the, the thing that made him successful is that he added value to himself right throughout. The soft skills that he was able to collect, whether it be speaking, whether it be writing, whether it be any other skill, even without knowing what it would end up, he would end up doing. He gathered these skills. And in, in the case of my second son, who just finished air levels, he also found a job, Australian company. And first time, I came across a real-life situation where Toastmastering, that is public speaking, has been the key point for him to get the job. And this is a company where he was interviewed to do the copywriting. And the CEO wanted to do a lot of scripts done for his 
podcasts. And he had asked, have you done any creative writing? So he said, okay, I've done English literature for my A-levels. That's one. But on top of that, I've been into Toastmasters since I was 10, 12 years. And I've done a lot of speeches. And I've, I've been writing my own scripts for my speeches. So that was the turning point for that person to go with him. He said, okay, now you have done a lot of speeches. Can you share some? He has sent some of his speech scripts. And they were impressed. The scripts he has written for his speeches. So that means for his podcast, he can use his skills to write the things. So always add value to yourself. Don't get stuck would be another advice. Add value to yourself because now I've been HR for now almost 20 years. I speak to young graduates on a daily basis who come for internships, who come for jobs. And I see there are some engineering students. Uh, we might cross our path someday. You might come to our organization uh, as engineers. And whenever I speak to them, they are so much focused on from where they get the degree, the university. And now there's a big debate about private and government universities. When it comes to private universities, what is UGC recognized? What is UGC approved? Will this university be accepted by the employers? A lot of debate. But my advice is focus on skills. Because as a HR professional, first thing I what I ask is, what can you do for our organization? What skills do you have to serve our organization? It's not the certificate. And my, as I said, the eldest son, he got into two very good jobs. But both places, they had not even looked at his first class degree certificate. It's the skills. So those who are in science, those who are in engineering, focus on developing your skills. Because in the future, that is what you need. So these are three things which I would like to uh, share with you some career advice which would come in handy. That is, it's never too late, never too early. It's when, when you decide, go ahead and do it. Second thing is always try to add value to yourself. Thirdly, not the piece of paper you get. Forget about that, right? Okay, you have to get a valid certificate, otherwise you would have wasted a uh, good uh, one and a half, two million uh, rupees. But don't be so worried about that because at the end of the day, for us in industry, what matters is what you can do, the skills that you can. So those are the three advices which I would like to share with all the youngsters, uh, all the boys and girls who are in the audience. How do you get? Right, Dr. Prabha. Again, I think that's great advice because uh, we do tend to, we have these mentalities where we tend to stick to what we're doing, even if we're not happy, we think that we should just continue going on. We're scared to take risks. And again, uh, very truly, we worry too much about what's on paper. And that might not exactly reflect on what we're capable of doing. So we should definitely work on those skills as well. So I'd like to direct the question to uh, Mr. Tarusha Pereira. From your experience switching careers, what sort of advice would you have to give uh, to us people and also perhaps in terms of uh, financial uh, measures as well. Yeah, so if I talk about switching careers, so what should you consider uh, when you are hoping to switch your career one day in future? Uh, let me uh, briefly tell you about a couple of points which I think uh, which would help you, which would be, which is valuable for you in future. So yeah, one thing is definitely, uh, as Dr. Uh, Prabhat said, uh, this, you're developing your skills. The, the communication and your network, your reliability, it's definitely something which is important. And also something I believe is, so now you guys are in uh, engineering or medical faculties as students, and you will be the soon to be doctors in the country. So before switching to another career, I, I think it's better if you work uh, for a couple of years in your in your domain, and it's not only for to the practice, but to learn and to develop these skills. Because when you move on with people, you learn this. No, you 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 may not, not learn this in your lecture halls at the universities, but when you properly work with people, only you 
learn these skills and uh, uh, when you know the what the real situation in the out society and how to manage your situations how to manage emergencies how to take your decisions so it's better uh, i think my perspective it's better to have some sort of uh, experience and uh, knowledge uh, before switching and then again so doing the switching focus on uh, always your uh, to develop your skills and the other point is uh yeah so maybe after this after this session you might be uh, thinking of a ways uh, of another ways alternative ways to do your side hustles or to to uh, to find some other uh, pathways for you to uh, pursue or to uh, let's say to have uh, to have another career as a second career or or or, or passion or a fun projects uh the one thing is uh you when you are switching or before switching you should know uh or it's better to know what you are really really interested in. i think even dr prabhat uh, mentioned in his uh, first uh, uh, discussions uh you should know what you really interested then you have that passion uh your energy coming to, uh, you, you can 100% dedicate for that right so i think it's better to have it because if you don't have that in you you what you do is you procrastinate things okay so you you think you 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 think you want to do it but you are not doing it you you keep postponing and procrastinating that's because you do not have identified what you are really passionate about or maybe you have uh, identified something you are passionate but you really don't know the deep the important most uh, the, the, the 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 how how deeply it's important to you so it's always uh, good to know uh, when you uh, do it because sometimes i'm, I'm sure you guys uh, even through the studies you might uh, uh, have uh, experience or you must have felt let's say uh, you, you are distracting uh, uh, when you're doing something you are you are getting distracted like right? sometimes we uh, even Uh, when I was in university, is and and uh, even with our friends, we have talked like much. Uh, uh, pro, we are we are getting distracted. We can't focus on something. Uh, so we, even when we start something, we are getting. If we are getting distracted, then I think, uh, in my perspective, what I think is we we actually do not have any distraction issue. So what we have is a lack of attraction issue. Okay, so I I I don't. use the word distractions what what i use the lack of attraction right so if you if you are lack of attraction to let lack of attraction to something you get distracted so when you are distracted just try to find out why you are lack of attraction to that thing and try to find a solution for that and try to find a ways to get more attracted or or uh, to 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 your work even when you are doing studies right and uh, let's say studies or in the future when you're switching career so starting your own business so it's like that and uh, the other one is yeah from the financial perspective i think if you are switching uh, one major thing we should uh, know is uh, our finance yeah, of course because we had to understand our country we had to understand economy we had to understand our own financials whether we can step out of uh come we can step out of the our current career and to a, start a new career uh, uh with our financial or not so we had to decide it so i think it's better if you can let's say you if you can have like a small emergency fund for yourself if you are switching your careers uh let's say some some amount of money you have saved Uh, through doing uh, various projects or your freelance or some other uh, your maybe your primary career uh, if you have some savings then you have some sort of uh, uh, like a, let's say safety net for your financial then you know you you can take your calculated risk for when you're switching to the next career because we know because we have to be realistic like we are not living in usa or some other country we are in sri lanka so we have to know our country and the economics of the country and uh, how risk uh, what type of risk we are taking so it's a better the if you if you don't have uh, some much inherited money from family or so friends then try to uh, save some money and then uh, keep that uh, as a let's say your emergency fund and then 
transfer to your when you switch right and uh, the other thing is uh, you have to start it starts small it's okay it's okay to start small uh, and uh, you can when you start small the, the most important thing is to start because uh, we we have seen a lot of people a lot of students or my friends even they plan they have so much of ideas they have so much uh, great ideas but they don't execute so execution is the most important thing if you are doing and switching so when executing you can start small no no problem with that and then gradually slowly you can uh, expand your business or you can uh, expand your new career right and uh, the other thing is uh, one major like the final thing i would like to uh, give you as an advice is you will get motivated uh, uh, from even even our speeches you will get motivated and uh, you can you can watch uh, so many youtube videos and motivations uh there are so many uh, uh speakers will talk about motivation in, in in internet but what really matters is not the motivation you you need to have motivation but it's really really temporary thing okay so what you need is the discipline when you are switching the career or even in your career uh what you should have the discipline what you should have is the discipline right uh I I I I personally believe it's like motivation is something like a, like a soda bottle right so when you open the bottle uh, the carbon dioxide uh, coming out and uh, it's it's nothing after 5 to 10 minutes it's, the motivation is similar to that uh, after a couple of weeks uh, you will you will get you will after maybe after this session you will get uh, you will find more new ways new plans uh, but after a couple of weeks you might you will have that motivation for maybe two weeks that's the reality but the the most important thing is i think uh dr prabhat and uh, abdul might may agree with me so even they what they do is they 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 continued they keep kept their consistency on what they doing so they had the discipline uh, on what when they change their careers uh, they when they just try something new so discipline will uh, uh, help you out when you're switching uh, careers or when you're switching to a new 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 platform so i think these are the some key points that i want to highlight as advice so if i could, like summarize the communication skills uh, of course networking and then you need to have some sort of a safety net before switching it's always good to take a calculated risk and start small and the discipline is the most important thing uh, when you are switching from one to another Thank you. Over to you. And uh, yet again, from Mr. Tarush Pereira, we have yet another set of concrete advice that we can practice in our day-to-day -day lives. So uh, with that, I'd like to direct the question to Mr. Abdul. So what sort of advice would you give considering the experiences you had and the obstacles you've gotten through for people especially applicable for our students at this moment to manage two things at once what advice would you have um yeah from my end i would like to say it's it's your passion versus your commitment is the main thing that you have to do right yeah, it's your passion and your commitment like how much you are willing to commit towards your passion right so we first have to you know question ourselves on what are the challenges that we will be facing if you are if we are you know chasing our passion and what what are the new challenges which we will be facing and then also at the same time in the back of the head we have to remember that you know the reward that we'll be get, getting you know from by chasing this passion of us because we all know as human beings we we should be appreciate and you know we uh, we like to be rewarded by either you know maybe someone saying okay nice job wonderful that you did something good or maybe verbally or maybe physically by a gift so you know as human beings you always uh, be promoted for rewards so the rewards might take some time but if you are chasing your passion like towards you know uh, what you like despite of doing what you are currently right now maybe you want to change your field or maybe not right but the challenges that you uh, you know analyze and then the risk that you take will definitely lead lead towards the possible the rewards that you will be getting but it it might be not uh, fast as we can assume it might take some time but remember that if you are really doing it 
you know passionately if you are committing yourself and if you are doing it honestly then the reward will be really worth it right and then as all the other speakers were giving the expert opinions i like to at one point saying that have clear simple goals like just target for the next 5 years by the end of 2020 i know maybe 2030 like when the sdgs are over right 2030 now we know the sustainable development goals are just speeding up to just reach to their targets in 2030 so as youngsters we all should be aware and think i think most of us i think every one of us are aware about sdgs okay that that we know that this much of awareness is available right so by when the sdgs are sdgs are coming into an end on that era then what are we going to do and what will be our plan just target the next 5 years every year at the beginning when you are getting a new diary that you are you know the experience that you are going to start a new year just try to have that enthusiasm in what will be your next plan in next 5 years you might not be accurate none of the plans will be 100% accurate but if you are able to reach for a certain limit then that's success right because uh, because it's up to you to digest the fact that the amount of effort that you are putting into and the results that you are getting Like in a competitive world, it's really hard to get what you want, like you know, the uh, to scale it in a way that how it used to be back then. But now, it it's totally depending on the consistent effort that you are giving, the hard work that you are giving. So that will really pay you off. And then, the most hardest part is to maintain this work-life balance. So while committing yourself, doing all this hard work, you should not lose yourself. You should have some time for entertainment. You should have time for yourself just to do. you know to have a relaxation to you should find some time it will be really hard if you are a passionate you know if you're passionate enough to work 24/7 because we all know whenever we hear a story from an entrepreneur a small startup but they say always that we come across is that they work 24/7 even at the night if they get a message like because as tarush was mentioning before you have to be your uh, you know sales guy you have to be your customer service representative you need to be everything you have to play all the roles right then there will be less time for yourself but then we have to make sure that we will be Uh, you know, fulfilling uh, our role in all the way, and also by maintaining and having some time for ourselves. And always, finally, I would like to say that make sure to step out of your comfort zone. If you are trying to do everything within your comfort zone, then you will be limited to certain extent. But if you are trying to do what you are passionate about and which you are really like, then you should you need to be ready to step out of your comfort zone and mind it. And remember, that will be really worth it if you are really into it. and uh, that's the simple thing i want to say and then i would like to wish all the very best for all the uh, you know enthusiastic uh, youngsters who joined us today i mean this timings crucial timings on a holiday so that they want to get some insight and some inspiration from all the panelists and uh, yeah thank you for being with us okay to all right okay so again another as uh, we move along i think we've covered a quite a diverse set of uh, perspectives when it comes to career diversity and uh, you know the things that we need to keep in mind when pursuing our careers and making decisions so before wrapping up i think we have just enough time for uh, one question from the audience so i'd like to open the floor to somebody who would like to ask a question All right. So yes, I do have a question from my end. Am I audible? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to know what type of jobs we should consider as a parallel plan looking into the future of Sri Lanka. So, uh, would one of our panelists like to answer this question? um can she elaborate on the question a bit more yes i just i wanted to like uh, get a kind of a plan like what type of jobs uh, looking into the sri lankan situation like like what type of jobs we i mean the youngsters should uh, consider of it doesn't matter the talents like they can create themselves their talents but then uh, what type of jobs will be uh you know uh, where where it will be in a highly demanded and also a uh, good in a rating scale i just wanted to know what will be uh, what should be considered hello um yeah yes um 
okay in, into that question i will add a small point so that every other panelist also had some points on to that simply i would say like uh, in my opinion my personal opinion i believe that you should not follow the you know the the trend that which will give you perks in the society rather you should always you know try to believe because talent and skills are you know uh, two different components right so you can uh, you might have a talent that you know which others might not have but if you don't develop the particular soft skills around it then you won't be able to bring out your talent properly so it doesn't need to be that your particular talent is you know uh, been should be in high demand of the world currently right now or to in the sri lankan the sri lankan perspective because in sri lankan perspective a uh, small island nation that we are limited with you know certain a particular mindset but then when we look into the world that we know the picture is broad enough right for example i just saw a show uh, like you know a, a recent show about the shark tank so i'm watching it in shark tank there was a entrepreneur who came up with an idea of making a slime you know you know about slime right so he make up, he came up with an idea of slime where he makes the things like looking edible but it's not edible it is simple thing but like who might think that his business will go to about like you know his revenue will go to 1 million us dollars by slime business so it's not about the scale that which you think in mind it's about the passion that you put into what you like then then you can take it to the next level the world is more open and then more open to your new ideas i think others can add more to the calls Dr. Prabhat, can we get your opinion on this on this question? Yeah, uh, I also have a slightly different uh, perspective on this because uh, I'm I'm part of this part of this uh, social media groups of university students. So the question is okay now the software engineering they, they can't even find internships. What's going to be the future? What should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? So what I always say is yes with AI and all these uh, new Uh, developments the landscape of the job environment is changing however in every single line of uh, business so a single line of career there will be at least few people who will be who will be needed not everyone would be out of business or out of work so my advice is why don't you say if you want to be a software engineer yes there won't be 1000 jobs for software engineers but there will be definitely 10 right so if your worry is now since the 1000 is going to be 10 is it my passion is software engineering should i be getting into this so my advice is if that meets your criteria whether you like it you can do it and is your passion your personality everything suits that do it and your target should be to get in the top 10 the top 10 will have opportunities anyway those who are going to lose jobs are the ones who just might call them software engineers they won't have jobs yes going forward there will be a lot of uh, jobs being redundant but every single profession there will be a few who are needed humans who are needed always try to be that that elite group who have the expertise the skills capabilities that no one can match then you will have your job so therefore uh, my advice is don't get overly bothered by the fact that okay in 10 years this job might not be uh, available there won't be any uh, uh, opportunities for this line yes but the thing is there will be less very rarely you will find a job that will totally go out of the scene so if even if there's less if you are passionate if you want to do it you can select that but don't try to be just be another one in that line but be the best so then definitely you will have an opportunity that's how i see it if you like it you select that don't worry about the availability of the or the decreasing amount of available positions select that but try to be the best then you will be safe right after that and uh, to wrap up can we also have uh, mr tarush pereira's opinion regarding this matter yeah so it's it's like a very vague question uh but i think i'm i'm mostly agreeing with uh, dr prabhat what he said and uh, the, uh, what from my my from my experience uh, from the it background what i would like to say is uh, yeah so so everything is connected to technology these days so even if you are a doctor even if you are an engineer even if you are a scientist or in any field even if you are a marketer even 
as uh, I am as a cookie um, in a cookie business, even if you are making cakes, even if you're a singer. So everything connects with the technology. So if you can, if you if you are uh, more uh, ongoing, like uh, let's say uh, connected to technology and what are the changes in the society, then you can definitely change your, uh, you can definitely move on with in, in anything you, 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 you follow, right? And uh, the, especially, uh, you know, uh, we all know like AI is uh, uh, cha- changing uh, the, the world uh, so faster than we think. And uh, but the what I see is uh, the technology uh, will not replace most of the jobs. But what happens is people who know how to use the technology will replace the people who don't know. So that's kind of a uh, thing. Uh, uh, some uh, perspective I am having. So so whether you are an engineer, whether you are a doctor, uh, try to learn, uh, stay with the technology. What are the so so get to know about what are the changes, latest changes, and try to, there are so many free tools, like like Abdul said, uh, try to use those tools, get the advantages, get, get the help of those tools uh, when you are doing your career. So do what you love uh, for your career and with the, the help of uh, the technology, then if there's any change, you can definitely move and uh, uh, change your, uh, uh, adjust with uh, your career to, to, to according to that. So that's my opinion on that. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Parusha. So with that, I believe we can uh, call it a wrap. And a huge thank you to our panelists today, because I do believe that we covered a large ground when it comes to career compass. We talked about you know not only the systems challenges, but also advice how to overcome it, and even more general things, not just about career, but also about the life in general as well. So I'd like to hand it over to Raihan Ishan to propose the vote of thanks. And with that, I'll be signing off. Thank you. Um, am I audible? Yes, we can hear yes. All right. So this concludes our event, Career Compass. So we hope you found the discussions insightful and inspiring. A huge thank you to our esteemed panelists, Dr. Prabhat, Mr. Tarusha Pereira, and Mr. Abdul Tawab for sharing your valuable knowledge and experiences. We are also grateful to our moderator, Niket, for keeping the conversation flowing and engaging. We also extend our deepest appreciation to the dedicated teams at SL Webcast and Rotract Club of University of Colombo Faculty of Medicine who tirelessly worked behind the scenes to make this event a success. Finally, thank you to all our audience for joining us today. Your participation and engagement are what truly makes this event special. We hope you feel empowered to take action and make a difference in your area of interest. So for those who have missed maybe a portion of this, uh, we will be uploading the recording of this meeting in the YouTube channel of Rotract club shortly so we will be letting you know it in the group so once again thank you all for joining us today and have a great day